Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about opening a staircase opening in steel structure floors. And I want to start the video by remembering our building, a building that we use uh, in the studio part of the course. Uh, it was uh, up and less very similar with the previous terms building. I have already shared these uh, plans from its learning with you. It looks very similar with the previous terms building, but what I did is I have decreased the total size, total area uh, of the living room and kitchen it and make it six by six. And I have enlarged the uh, length of the entrance hall here and there because I want to place a stair system here. Because as you know, the main difference of this terms building is adding, uh, is firstly converting the structural system material from reinforced concrete to steel. And the second thing that I made, the second change that I make is adding a staircase on the right hand side bottom corner of this building, which is connecting the ground floor of the building to the basement floor. You please remember that uh, we have talked about the direction of uh, walking lines in the stair drawings. I have told you that uh, the walking line shows the way up in Turkey and in Europe. Uh, so when you look at this, these drawings you will see that the stair starts on the ground floor from here and you climb up like that and reach to the ground floor here. Which means that that line is a border line for our staircase opening okay let's draw it maybe with some colors so this pink line that i draw here belongs to this floor okay the floor here ends right at this line and the stair is placed into a hole like this okay and that hole it is going, uh, the, the stair is added to this hole and you go down like that in order to reach to the lower level. Okay, going down like this, climbing up like that. Okay, and it, as this is the ground floor drawing of the building, we see the stair system from top and we see the entire floor system. So you don't need to put any diagonal lines. Okay, last term. Uh, during the uh, lectures and, and this term as well, during the lectures about the stair systems, we have talked about these in detail. Basically, until now, what did we do? We have converted these reinforced concrete floors. These are RC floors. Okay, last term. Uh, excuse me, not floors, RC columns. They were RC columns last term and this term we have converted those columns into steel. Okay, so this term we have converted them into steel columns. It is steel columns and specifically they are age 260 I guess okay at the beginning of the term we have we have made calculations about that and last term uh, excuse me last week in the video I told you that in order to convert this building or this floor of the building into a steel concrete composite deck type of floor we need to add columns on all these points that you see as reinforced concrete and then we will connect them to each other with steel beams, steel main beams, so steel main beam there, steel main beam here, main beam dash, one more here, until dash, one more here, one more dash, okay, basically we are connecting all columns to each other with steel main beams. And then okay, let's draw all the steel columns in order to make you understand more clearly and easily. Like this, we have got steel columns everywhere. 
Okay, and to those steel columns, we have got main beams added. And we need to extend this until dash. And then we need to look at the dimensions, which is representing the total length of the main beams. So the total length of this main beam is something around 5.5. This main beam is 5.5 as well. We have got two main beams here, which are passing 4.65 meters of span. Okay, this beam is also passing 4.65. And these two beams are passing a span of around 3.25. Okay, and this beam is also passing 5.5 meters of a span. Okay, and these spans are important firstly to dimension these beams. We have dimensions those beams. Those are firstly steel main beams. Okay, and then we have calculated them by this very simple formula. Please remember that. Okay, L, H, and in steel structured buildings, H is something around L, point, uh, L divided by 20. Okay, and we have found out them out to be something around 30 centimeters in height. Okay, let's say that I 300 there. Okay, and now. What we need to do, we need to determine how many secondary beams we need here. And for secondary beams, there's a rule, steel trapezoidal sheet may not pass, may not pass more than 2.5 meters. Okay. What we need to do, we need to add a secondary beam if the span, uh, secondary beam uh, and the distance between secondary and main beams should be lower than 2.5 meters. So if we add just one secondary beam here on this direction, as this is a square shaped building, we can add uh, secondary beams where, where whichever direction we like. Okay, but if we add here, right in the middle, the distance will be more than 2.5 meters. It will be something around 2.75, which means that we need to add two secondary beams here. Let's add the secondary beams with uh, orange colors. So one secondary beam on this direction and the other secondary beam will be on here. And the distance between the secondary beams now will be something around two meters and our building will be safe. Here we have got 4.65 centimeters of uh, span. So what we need to do, we need to add it like this. One secondary beam will be enough. And here on the length direction, we place the secondary beams parallel to the long main beam. That's why we need to add a secondary beam here. Okay. But as you see, we have a problem here. Our secondary beam that we placed in the entrance of the building is passing over the staircase opening, which is not possible. As we don't know that, we cannot pass a secondary beam over uh, a staircase opening. What we need to do, we need to change this place. So it is very easy really. We need to shift this beam to here, to the side of the staircase opening. Okay, now let's see how it happens on a new page. Let's, as always, start drawing by drawing the borders of our building. Okay, this was our building. Something like this, I guess. Yes, and something like that here. Okay, and we have... Okay, let's get a... Pen. So here are our H profiles, which are our columns. And let's connect our H profiles to each other with, but before connecting them, like I did in my previous video videos, I'm going to draw, uh, I'm going to erase my floor border lines. Going to erase them in order to make you see and understand it more clearly. 
I just draw them, start drawing by drawing those border lines in order to be able to place the columns on right places. Now let's erase them because the beams, the main beams, cannot be placed right above the border line of a floor. You know that a column, let's draw a plan detail, and the main beam connection is going to have a view like this. Okay, let's highlight it. This is our column like this. Okay, and let's draw the center lines of our column. The beams need to be placed on over those center lines. That's what we, we do in architecture or in civil engineering, let's say. Okay, so this is a plan detail again. Okay, these are beams, beam, beam. They are both I-shaped profiles. Okay, and this is a column. Everything that you see in this detail is steel. And this is an edge profile. Okay, now we are going to, we are ready to add our main beams. Here is the first main beam. It will take some time. Let's draw all the main beams. So main beams are the main spam passing and load building components in a building. They transfer the loads coming on to a floor to the columns. Like this and like that. And we shouldn't forget the last one that we have here. Okay. And now, as I have already told you, and as I have shown you the previous week, we need to add our secondary beams. Here is the first secondary beam and second secondary beam here. Okay. And we are going to have one more secondary beam here. Okay. Don't forget that in those video drawings that I have shared with you, the total length of our building from here to there is something around 12.75 meters and this length that we have here is if I didn't sum it up wrongly is going to be 9.5 meters and this length that we have here is going to be something around 6 meters and what do we have left this length from here to here okay is something around six meters and uh, if i'm not wrong five point seventy five meters uh, just a second, I guess we did something wrong. This should be 11.75. Something like that. Okay, the exact dimensions is not very critical at this point. Uh, but we know that from here to here, it is 3.5 meters or 3.54 or 2.75 is not important. Uh, the distance between these two main beams are larger than 2.5 meters which makes us add a secondary beam here. But now before adding the secondary beam right in the middle, let's draw our staircase opening here. We want to have a staircase opening like this, right on this floor system. And in order to place, so firstly, let's take back this paper and let's find out the total size of our staircase opening. So the stair itself, just a second, I want it to be seen straightly. Okay, the staircase opening, as you see here, is going to be 1.8 by, I guess, 2.65 and 2.75. Okay, this one and this one, I have summed them up. To find the distance from here to there, it's 2.75 staircase opening size, and from here to here, it's 1.8 meters. So let's turn back 
and let's see that we have 1.8 meters here and 2.75 meters there okay and in order to leave here empty what we need to do is we need to put a beam on this side of our stair uh, of our uh, staircase opening okay because from last week please remember that vertical circulation systems define an opening in the floor system in the floor system this is that opening yeah. this is that opening the opening placed on the floor for placing a stair inside that's what we call staircase opening okay and now we can place a steel trapezoidal sheet on this direction so on this part of our floor it's possible to place our steel trapezoidal sheet but what we need to do we need to control here okay that part will be a floor system as well so this is going to be 1.8 meters which means that it's all right to place the steel trapezoidal sheet here as well because we have got 1.8 meters which is lower than the ability of the steel trapezoidal sheet to pass the span but anyway we need to place another beam here okay because don't forget that the opening that is defined by the staircase or stair needs to be surrounded with beams all around so the function of these beams are firstly carrying or, or generating the staircase opening or carrying the rest of the floor and secondly we are going to use especially this beam to be able to carry our stair system okay. so as we are focusing on this part of this drawing now what we need to do is we need to highlight it okay these are our columns I'm going to use orange to reference to our main beams these are our main beams and I will use pink color to reference to our secondary beam firstly there is this secondary beam going that, that direction we are not interested in that one and we have forgotten to uh, start drawing the main beam there as well okay but more important than that in order to leave a gap there we need to place two extra beams secondary beams around the staircase opening so now let's take a different color let's take my brown colors and and let's write here this is staircase opening here it is a hole in the floor okay and what I do is I will draw firstly again with brown lines okay no maybe brown is not going to be very appropriate I will choose to draw it with blue I'm going to draw some blue lines here and the blue dash and dotted line what do you think are these blue lines representing those are representing the L profile why do we need to have an L profile there because we want to prevent the concrete that we are going to cast out cast on the steel trapezoidal sheet to flow to the sides and as here is, a, is an opening we need to put the L profile on top of that secondary beam and this secondary beam as well and here are the direction of my steel trapezoidal sheet Okay. 
And over the steel trapezoidal sheet, what do we do? We cover it with reinforced concrete. And here is that reinforced concrete that is going to be casted above the steel trapezoidal sheet. Let me hatch it more darkly in order to make you understand that. Here we need to leave it empty. Okay, that's how we generate a staircase opening in steel structured buildings. Um, and now let's turn back to the first day of the term and let's remember something. Let's remember something about our uh, studio works. I have told you that there are two ways of making or constructing or detail designing steel structured buildings. I have shown images about them. Two ways. Let's say that this line represents ground. Okay, and the first option is constructing all parts of our building in reinforced concrete under the ground and constructing or starting the usage of steel over the ground okay and in this case these lines are representing columns so this is a steel column and it continues as a reinforced concrete column here and what about the second option? In the second option, we construct a reinforced concrete structured pool and we construct the steel structured building into that pool, which is going to give us the possibility of making the steel column continuously steel until the foundation. Okay, and what are the function of these blue lines? Please don't forget that. We have marked this blue line as reinforced concrete column, but next to that reinforced concrete column, we need to have shear walls because we want to keep soil there. We want to prevent it to fall down into our building. And this wall, side wall of our pool that we have constructed for our steel structured building is going to act as the same basement wall, which is going to prevent the soil on its left side to fall into our basement floor okay and this drawing that we have made let's name it as steel structured ground floor plan floor structural plan <laughs> too many structure words but i want to be here clear and let's okay no no not this one will will confuse you maybe okay with eye shaped beams let's name it as just a second floor type a okay so let's try to find a type of floors here okay so what we have that a type of floor is here this is a okay and last week we have drawn the structural floor plan a steel structured one a steel concrete composite type of, of one let's name it as b okay so the b type of floors are going to be this one and this one what will be the difference between b type of floors and a type of floors the b one doesn't have a staircase opening here Okay, the only difference is in A types we have got a staircase opening. Okay, in B types we don't have any opening. Okay, but you see that we have a C type of floor here. Okay, because one type of or one way that we can use to construct a steel structured building is constructing it is basement level, its substructure underneath the ground uh, oh, okay i lost my concentration in one type we can construct all substructural part of the building in reinforced concrete 
Okay, so A, B, R, let's write it here. A and B symbols represent, represent steel, concrete, composite floors in our exemplary building. And C type represent a RC floor, which means that we need to remember uh, last term very clearly, and it will be very easy, and it's going to help us to remember or to learn how we open a staircase opening in a steel structure building, like I did. A few minutes ago, I'm going to start by drawing the border lines of my floor. But before I continue from dash, I will draw some lines here. Okay, so this is a plan drawing. And this is my age profile. Okay, in the plan, that's my age profile. Now, let's write its name. Okay, this is steel column in parentheses it's, it's an H section or H profile okay with blue I will draw a box here and on the perimeter of that box I'm going to put some holes Okay, or some circles like this. Okay, so what is the blue thing represented? Representing it's representing a steel base plate. Steel base plates are used to anchor a steel column to a reinforced concrete plate or a steel beam to a reinforced concrete. Uh, column again or a wall again okay and with pink i will draw another line which is slightly larger than my base plate okay and i will tell or write onto that as reinforced concrete column okay i mismatched the colors between this one and that one Okay, but basically what I draw there is, this is my steel column, uh, reinforced concrete column. Okay, I'm drawing a, an elevation now. And over that reinforced concrete column, I place my base plate. It is anchored to the column with the help of bolts. And here is my steel column. Okay, like that. This is plan and this is elevation. Okay, and please remember that our steel columns, our H section, I guess they were HD 260. We have calculated it like that and we have found out that they are something around 30 by 30. Okay, and I have told you that the base plate needs to be around 5 centimeters larger on all directions, which means that the size of steel base plate is something around 40 by 40. Okay, and column, let's make it 2, 3 centimeters larger to all directions. I want the column to be 45 by 45. Okay, now that's very easy. I did all these to be able to place, okay, place the square shaped columns in their right places. These are my columns okay and which type of reinforced concrete floor would you like to work on in order to keep everything simple uh, and as the spans are appropriate 
I'm going to choose a steel uh, reinforced concrete slab floor. Okay, we are going to tie these columns to each other with beams like that. But please don't forget that if there is a reinforced concrete wall underneath a beam, do we need to have that beam anymore? No, we don't. Because we are going to place a beam whenever there is a span. Which means that I'm going to draw um, in pink and now these are representing what they are representing the reinforced concrete basement walls okay so these are these walls that I have there and in order to make you clearly understand that I'm going to hatch a part of it Like that okay they are continuous walls okay and what do we need to do we need to mark it a little bit this is reinforced concrete column okay this is reinforced concrete basement wall okay. this is also a, an RC column let's repeat it two times okay and I want to use a different color now I'm going to use an orange, okay? With orange, I'm going to draw my beam. There isn't a basement wall there, a perimeter wall. That's why that span needs to be passed by a beam, okay? So the orange ones are now representing RC beams. This is also an RC beam. And with brown, I'm going to write one last word. I will write here R C slap and this is also R C slap okay and now please remember that okay we need to have a staircase opening in the ground floor in order to place a stair inside it and it is size is 1.8 to 2.25 and this is also a ground floor of one type of our buildings and that hole will be placed here okay. and in order to be able to place a hole there what should I do? I should surround the hole with beams okay. and here is a beam that I have added for surrounding the opening and carrying it carrying the stairs that we will place inside okay so these are also beams made of RC RC secondary beam okay and I want to draw it uh, write its name outside of my drawing this is also an RC secondary beam with brown let's write the RC slabs I have an RC slab here and another RC slab there. And here I will write that this is staircase opening. That's it. That's it. I want to draw some details anyway. So these two drawings are the first drawing that you need to you need to draw. A steel concrete composite deck type of ground floor with a staircase opening inside that. I assume you have already drawn the steel concrete composite deck structural plans. So I suggest you to erase it and open erase this part of it. And open a staircase opening there and I uh, 
the, the second drawing that you need to draw is this one and I will draw some sections now let's start with this drawing firstly I'm going to draw a section passing from here and looking to this side okay that will be a detail uh, about the stair system okay, let's take this sheet out let's keep that one here let's take a blank page okay and we are going to draw a line from there and apart from there firstly what will I do I'm going to draw a faint line here which is representing ground light okay and then I'm going to take my thickest pencil and I'm going to draw that let's extend it even more this is a detail okay I will draw my basement wall okay and this is my foundation here like that okay and I will take my blue pen and I'm going to draw my base plate right there and these hooks are representing the bolts that I have applied and then I'm going to draw my steel column steel column continuously going up like this okay and right here I will draw my steel main beam and with my thin line I'm going to draw okay to draw it very straight so I want to redraw it this is an elevation line of the beam okay top flange bottom flange okay that's the beam in the background okay I have my L profile here and that L profile also turns dash so this is the back side of the L, L profile okay and what I will do is going to be very simple okay. there's a stair which will go up like this there will be a landing here and the stair is going to climb up like that you see you see okay stair going up like this there's a landing here and the other flight of the stairs last week we have talked about it in detail okay and I have told you that all stairs need to be supported by a beam all flights and the beam of the stair here is going to let, let's draw it firstly okay but in order to make you understand it more clearly I'm going to extend the foundation here some more like this again I had drawn it not very straightly let me redraw it okay foundation goes like this okay. and my beam of the stair which is a, an eye shape profile will be placed there let's place it firstly okay I am going to okay, draw it first let's draw it with black okay so this is going to be the beam of the stairs something like this please remember that last week I told you that it is not going to be easy to cut a beam diagonally like this and it will be hard to place a steel base plate underneath it or the when we cut the uh, steel members diagonally the size of the steel base plates are going to be more than necessary okay that's why we usually would like to make a steel beam be tied to a steel base plate with flat edges like, like this okay that's why what will I do I will draw it let's draw again with, with with orange orange will be better okay I'm going to draw my beam here okay and here is the other beam like that okay and 
bit blue, I will draw here again a base plate and these dots that lines are representing the hooks. Okay. All beams need to be supported by a support at the end points of them. We have categorized the sta uh, steel stairs or, or stair systems according to the supports of them. But as you see that we do not have any support there. The blue column that we see in the background is a couple of meters away. It's an elevation line. Which means that at the landing level we need to place another beam. Okay, this other beam can be an identical twin of the floor level beam. But that beam is mainly there for carrying our stair system. As we have a column here and another column on the back side of my section plate, I can place very easily a beam there. And that beam is going to help us to tie the beam of the stair to here. Um, okay. And now this is going to be the first beam or beam of one flight. Okay, so behind that beam again another beam starts like that and let's draw it in black color okay it's going to climb up like that but in order to make you see it easily understand it easily let's firstly extend the beam in the background okay so remember each remember that i have told you that each Stair defines a staircase opening. This is the staircase opening that I mean and we need to support that staircase opening with beams around it and those are secondary beams. Remember that? What will I do now? I'm going to take my brown pen and I will draw here Secondary beam. Here is my secondary beam. Okay. The previous one, the black one that you see there is the main beam. It's in the background. Okay. And this is the extra beam that I place for surrounding my staircase opening. And remember that on all sides of it, we need to have. A beam which means that in the section there need to be a beam here again okay like this and this beam will be used to carry my stairs what will I do I'm going to draw it like this here okay let's erase this line in order see more clearly okay and I'm going to draw it in brown again <coughs> okay that's the beam of the other stair it continues like this and it goes on like that okay so what's the difference between orange beam and brown beam Orange beam is more near to the section plane. Okay, and what will I do? Lastly, I'm going to draw here the steps. And how do we carry those steps with these triangular pieces underneath them? And here are those triangular pieces okay and I have got my steps right there as well okay, and the triangular pieces are also there this is how we construct stairs in steel now remember that you need to draw this, this kind of a section, a partial section as well. I want you to work on it. Okay. Like that. 
that. Okay. And now a couple of weeks, two weeks ago, not a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, I have told you that in order to place an external wall, we need to extend our floors. Okay. So now what I say is next week you are going to have a new video which will show you that we need to extend the floor outside of our columns like this and we will do that for easily placing a wall an external wall to our building and that will be a cantilevered wall that will be a kind of balcony which is surrounding the entire building and here you can easily see the reason why we need to make it especially in these types of steel structured buildings because between the side surrounding wall reinforced concrete wall of our basement floor and our ground floor there is a gap here okay you see and this is really a gap an opening into which birds can enter okay so we need to prevent that kind of a gap okay from now on this part is not the, the, you don't need to draw this part we will learn it next week okay and what what i say is we will do this we are going to put a, cut a small piece of our secondary beam we are going to tie it to our main beam with the help of these flex you know okay and in order to have a flat end and a close which is going to barrier the birds from entering our building we are going to put here a u profile okay and we are going to you know that we have got an l profile here we are going to move that L profile to here okay. and here are our steel trapezoidal sheet going like this to here okay and we are going to have let's draw with brown here concrete like that okay and the idea, external walls this week, we will talk about external walls during the lecture. The idea is placing the external wall here and preventing the external wall to intersect with the column. As I have already mentioned, this week we will talk about it in the lecture. That's all for today. Please don't forget that you need to draw, you need to draw three drawings. This is the first drawing, the steel concrete composite deck type of floors in steel structured buildings with a staircase opening inside. And this is the second drawing that you need to draw, a reinforced concrete slab floor structural plan with a staircase opening inside it. And this is the third drawing that you need to make, which is showing us the main principles that we use to place a steel structured stair in a building, in a steel structured building. Okay? It doesn't matter, you can place this stair in a reinforced concrete structured building as well. Steel structured stairs can be placed in reinforced concrete structured buildings also. Uh, nothing very seriously will change. That's all for today and see you on another YouTube video. Bye bye.